and to speak a little bit about uh, the language itself. So we've seen what, what's possible within the Azure and outside of our environments. Let's see what's possible inside of our environments, and maybe not unravel directly, <coughs> but hopefully it will be also fun for you. I always dreamed about uh, doing a presentation through Visual Studio, and my dreams are coming true. Uh, so uh, code is all available on these URLs and slides as well, so don't, you don't need to uh, take uh, notes or anything like that. And I want to talk about uh, C Sharp 8. Uh, and as I've said, I always wanted to uh, run the presentation from Visual Studio, and I will do it. <laughs> And it just opens the browser, so nothing, nothing important, but yeah. So yeah, let's stay always up to date and what's new, not in Umbraco, but in C-Sharp 8, another 8 on the map. Uh, I want to start from question, and I will go here. Who already installed Visual Studio 2019? One, two, three, four. Uh, it was released yesterday, or two, two days ago, in, uh, after the preview. Uh, and the preview was already awesome. I I'm using it since it was uh, released. Uh, it's stable, it's fast, it's faster than previous Visual Studio uh, versions, and it's just awesome. And it's not so many of you who write these hands. And who is regularly using C Sharp 7 features? Regularly, this is the keyword. <laughs> three, of the, three of you, so one of three in the audience. Not so many people still, right? And why? <laughs> why is the key question here? Uh, I think that I observed some of my team members, and whenever this annoying yellow bulb is blinking uh, in the right corner of Visual Studio, they say, no, no, not now. Please, not now. I don't want to break anything in my environment, in my setup, etc. Uh, when Microsoft is pushes us to do it, because it makes their product better. And this is how we behave. Not now, I will wait until my other team members will install it or upgrade it. They will confirm it that everything works fine, uh, and then I will install it. That, my, that was my approach in the past as well. Uh, whenever any major version of Visual Studio was released, we were asking ourselves, did you install it? Does, that, does it run? Is it stable? And then, okay, maybe next month after this project finishes, I will upgrade it and I will use it. Uh, and it has changed a little, at least for me. Uh, because my approach right now is just do it. Whenever it's occurring this yellow bulb, I'm upgrading Visual Studio. If it will fail, if it, it may fail. It's not my fault. Uh, I always want to stay up to date. I want to always use the latest tools and the latest versions of those tools because I love to be up to date. Uh, and when I, when I see the release of new version of Visual Studio, I see it like, you know, this is my tool. This is my tool to work with. And I want to really use the latest possible features inside of it. And Microsoft is trying to make Visual Studio better and better with every release. And not only going straight to the direction of ReSharper uh, built in, in, um, in Visual Studio, but it's getting really better. So for example, you can enable some of the features which were missing in the past in your uh, environments and use, for example, suggestions for look at packages. If you're importing or inheriting projects from other companies and you have something missing, for example, you can see that. You can preview the warning messages or information in Visual Studio telling you what's wrong, what's missing in your projects. And that's only one of the features there. Uh, for example, if you or your friends or your colleagues using some of the code which is maybe not fully uh, <coughs> known for you, you can get a suggestion from Visual Studio saying that, man, this is a new feature in, um, in a C Sharp language. You, your environment is not compatible with that. So maybe install a NuGet package to support you with tuples, in this case, for example. Uh, and there's a lot of other uh, useful messages. If you are upgrading .NET Framework uh, and you want to use the latest version of C-Sharp language and you are not ready yet, you will get the information in the Visual Studio straight there. You will be, in the latest version of Visual Studio, will also be redirected to the URL to, the, to download the latest version of .NET Framework, which is awesome. Uh, so uh, my thing and my golden thought, uh, this is the single one in this talk, is if it's there, use it. But if it's not possible for you to use it, and, and C Sharp 8 is not possible to be used with Umbraco yet, but you can always, always use it in the other bits of your work. You can use functions, for example, to use the C Sharp 7 language or on .NET Core framework. Do something with it anywhere else. 
if it's not within your current work. Uh, and yeah, uh, C sharp language. We are, are we all backend developers? Is there anyone here who is not a backend developer? Okay, okay, cool. So yeah, C sharp uh, is, a, is an amazing language. I'm in love with C sharp, and its history says that uh, it was growing really, uh, uh, really uh, not, not, not so uh, great in the past, in my opinion. For example, there were always a major releases, and they were focused on some specific features. C sharp three, for example, Linku was introduced. It was a game changer, amazing new feature in in the C sharp world, which changed uh, the way how code is written since, uh, till, till now. Dynamics were introduced in C sharp four. Uh, Async was introduced in C sharp five, and has changed the game and the way how we are writing code and consuming code right now. But C sharp six. I cannot pick any single feature from this, this list, which is a game changer. They were all awesome. And Microsoft decided to not assign the major version to the single feature, single game changer, but release multiple of them. I love almost all of those features. And it's not a full list of features being released within the C Sharp 6 version. But I found that not as many developers are using them till now. And we have version 7, which also released a lot of amazing features in the C Sharp world. Out variables, pattern matching. I believe that maybe pattern matching and tuples are used really often by the developers. All the rest, no one cares. Refs, returns, locals, it's all related with the great performance improvements. We should all use it everywhere where it's, where it's possible to be used. Expression body constructor, maybe if you're using v Sharper, it suggests you to rewrite your code. To, to use expression body members, but we get used to what we were writing in the past, and we are not, most of us at least, we are not going to change it, but we should. And C Sharp 8, when I prepared this talk for the first time, it was about C Sharp 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3, which were in, in the preview then. Right now, they, were fu they are fully, re fully released, and C Sharp 8 is in preview, and it's ready for us, for you, to be picked and worked with. Anyone tried C Sharp 8 already? Yes. Uh, if, you, if you are curious about C Sharp 7, and I've seen that not so many of you already tried C Sharp, C -sharp 7 features, you can grab this uh, repo on my GitHub, uh, and I shared the whole example of all of those features uh, defined and described within a great pieces of code combined with Umbraco installation and how to make Umbraco website compatible with C Sharp 7 features and to be able to, to write code with C Sharp 7 in the Razor reviews and in the backend code as well. But today, we are talking about C Sharp and C Sharp 8 version. And it has changed in the uh, 2017 uh, when Microsoft decided to release C Sharp in the, main, in the minor versions. Earlier, it was always the new version of C Sharp, which was always major. And they decided to do a C Sharp 7.1 version. Uh, and then I've tried to find when it, they released 6.9 version, for example, or 6.5, and they have never done it. So I jumped to the Google and searched what has changed in the C Sharp, how, how C Sharp is changing, where are the C Sharp releases. And I found then that C Sharp is open sourced, which is not about the language itself, but the evolution of the language. And they are sharing all of the notes, plans, and intentions for the language itself on GitHub. And besides that, Roslyn, CoreFX, uh, Core CoreCLR, they are all open source, fully open source. You can preview what's changing within our environment and the framework itself. I, don't men I won't mention the core itself, ASP.NET Core. It's also there, and you can see where it goes, how it's changed, and even better, you can see how our language, our favorite language, will change in the next future. Of course, besides that, they are not keeping the dates uh, in the right format because 2080 is not here and it's still released. And there are some weird releases, which were probably won't be never uh, released, but all of the discussions, all of the team meetings, all of the features which are suggested by users, you can also suggest a feature or improvement for the language. They are all discussed, they are all on GitHub, and they are all grouped in a logical order and placed somewhere on the roadmap on the whole platform and the language itself. Uh, so we can contribute. We are open source community. Why not to contribute to C Sharp, which we use on a daily basis? We can. And I don't know if you've seen this uh, particular situation. It was very popular uh, on Twitter. 
a guy called, I can't remember his name, but his uh, handle is Saturn, uh, started an issue on GitHub and said, yeah, this is a simple one, knowable system <laughs> object. And he suggested some solution, play some uh, proof of concept code, which will solve the issue of not having knowable for system that object. Eight days later, <laughs> he changed his uh, uh, entry to, no, it escalated quickly, because this thread had more than 1,000 replies, uh, 20 or 25 uh, .NET MVPs were working on it, and they all decided that it's not so simple, because it will break all of the framework logic, all of the code, and I've learned more about Core CLR and the .NET framework from this thread than from more books and, and articles which I've read in the past. So you can learn from people's mistakes, you can learn from .NET MVPs and other MVPs straight on the GitHub without diving into code, without having code of the language itself, which is awesome. Okay, but talk is cheap. I will show you some code. Uh, so yeah, I've played with C-sharp 8. I wanted to really uh, include this and work uh, with that uh, together with Umbraco, but it's not possible yet. And as you can see, I have a lot of versions of Visual Studio, and hopefully this is the, the correct one. So uh, to play with C-sharp 8 right now, you need to have <laughs> A core um, runtime in version 3 installed, which is in preview as well, and it works only in the preview version of Visual Studio 2019, even if it was released outside of the preview. Uh, but yeah, I've created a couple examples, and if we're talking about C-Sharp 8, probably knowable reference types are something which is mentioned the most uh, in the discussions about the language, and it's all about controlling the biggest coding mistakes ever, which is a null reference exception. We are all facing that. If you never cause the null exception, <laughs> you've probably done something wrong <laughs> already. Uh, and all of the language creators try to solve this issue for us, for programmers, and to reduce the risk of exposing the null reference exception. Someone already uh, recently tweeted that, the, that he or she will pay a lot of money for someone who uh, describe the type which is missing in this new reference type. But yeah, uh, you probably noticed the annotation in the top, and this is saying that right now the knowable feature is disabled. So right now I'm writing the code same as I did in the past, in the previous releases or the previous language versions. And I've created a simple console application console uh, main thread, which is creating a couple of person with the first name, middle name, and the last name. And I, at the end of the process, I want to print the names, name lands, or names for those people. And printing is pretty simple. I, I'm just calling console.writeLine, and I'm just using uh, syntax, which is a first name, first name of the middle name, and the last name there. And the person class is pretty simple because it has only those properties. And I forgot to remove it. But yeah, this is how it works out of the box. But you can preview. Uh, possibilities which can be done within the implementation of the c -sharp. Right now, I will enable the nullable checks. And the runtime compiler should already highlight some useful information for me. I don't know if, we, if it's visible from, from the back, hopefully it is, but it exposed some of the problems within my code. So you can open your existing application, enable this flag on your Visual Studio, and you will learn when and where you made a mistake, and probably you, you made some of them, because I, I've discovered a few in my current projects. So it says that uh, here you cannot convert to, no, to, to non knowable reference, and uh, it's not here, but if I will uh, check here, I have a non knowable property middle name which is uninitialized. Uh, so I can do something like that, I can initialize this property, and I can of course initialize it with null, why not? Uh, but it will also expose this error somewhere else because I still, I will still use the null property uh, somewhere within my code. So what I can do in the recent version of, of the language, I can make this property nullable. So I can explicitly say that, yeah, I can accept null here. It can be null because people cannot have middle names, etc. And it solves the warning message here. But my further code said, and the analytics of it says that, hey, you are using right now possible uh, null object. So it still fails. 
in, and if I will open the code, if I will run this uh, example, it will fail. But now I at least know where I've made the mistake, where the code is not running, and why it's not running. So I can, oh, it's not building that. I won't be debugging it right now, so I will just revert it to the state where I know it's working. But uh, yeah, so what we can do now with this code, we can easily <coughs> check for null when we have the execution path where, which is using the nulls. But we can explicitly say that yeah, this property should can be nullable. And we can do exactly the same for every property, for example, in this class, or for any other types of properties. Uh, and when we are safe that we, it's, we accept nulls or not, we are, at least can specify that in the code. Microsoft dropped the idea of having the explanation mark and saying that, yeah, this, I don't care what the compiler says, because they had this idea in the past. Uh, but after the discussions with the community, they declined to have it. And right now, you can just specify if it's nullable or non nullable type. So, yeah, let's move forward, because the next example is about ranging and indexes. And it's something what a kind of sugar syntax for the writers and for coders, it can improve your code and readability of the code. And still, I broke something. Oh, it's running. That's uh, so yeah, uh, it's something that can improve your code. And I can just confirm that nullable types are failing, yeah? because I'm still using a null. Uh, and when it comes to branches and indices, indexes, uh, I've created a simple example where I'm creating a collection of names, which is which are retrieved from somewhere. And it's a simple collection, simple array of um, our dev team members. And I'm just yielding uh, the, the name from this collection. Uh, in the other example, I'm creating a people collection, which is doing almost the same. But I'm looking through the collection of objects, uh, which are also created uh, as an array. Uh, and what we can do in the latest version of the C -sharp language, which we are yielding normal collection, we can right now specify ranges to be looped through. So I can say, yeah, looped through the elements from 0 to 2. And this is the syntax for this, uh, this um, functionality. Uh, so I can specify the first element. I can specify if I should look through all of the elements of, the, of this uh, range. And then I can specify which element uh, is the end element in this collection. And same with that, because it creates the range object, I can create a range, which can be passed as a parameter, for example. It's, in, my, in my opinion, it's ideal, for example, for paging implementations. You can specify the range. The, of the collection, pass it as a parameter, and then return the collection of the specific range. And it works the same, so I can specify that, yeah, I, I, I want to have items from first to third index in, the, in this collection, and I just want to return this uh, array to be looked through. And uh, there's even more features, more, more options with this range, simple syntax sugar. Uh, you can, for example, get the first element and only the last element from the collection, which is which will be handled behind the scenes by the language itself, and you can all do that um, not right now in the version 8, eight of the language. So this is the syntax sugar. Uh, the next one, the next big one, is about asynchronous streams, and this is something what I really like the most probably in this release, in this at least preview release, because we tend to avoid async implementations because we don't know how they work. Uh, we, we, it's hard to debug async implementations, but when it comes to execution of the code and some of the scenarios which needs to be implemented, we really need to be async. And especially in this world of microservices, queues, and collections, we really need to be asynchronous. We should be independent from the code being executed earlier. And this is what Microsoft observed at some point, C Sharp 5, as I've said. But right now, they are improving language and improving platform to be ready for those implementations. For example, in the C-Sharp 7.2 or 3, they've introduced the asynchronous main functions in the console apps, which changed, changed the game because right now we can write console apps which are running asynchronously. And they are possible to be used within the functions, still being totally asynchronous. Uh, so yeah, in my example implementation, I have a simple service, which is getting my followers, for example. And then I want to just display the handles, Twitter handles for every uh, follower. My uh, implementation, which is a static implementation, is just looking to the collection. And my service, 
once again, array of person with the name, and I wrote an async method, which is getting the collection of those followers in the async world, but this is a demo code, so it's not perfect yet. So I choose random delay for every subscriber being pulled, and I sleep the thread for a while to imitate the async framework. The execution. And right now, of course, it works fine within this example. This is a synchronous way of doing it. And when I will change this uh, method to be async, because I wrote, read the documentation and say that there, it's possible to be async, I have an error and I cannot run this code because it says that for each statement cannot operate on variable <coughs> of I async enumerable because it wasn't possible in the previous version of, of the language. And right now, in C8, I can say, async this collection, uh, so await execution of this for each loop because it's getting the data in the asynchronous ways. So yeah, it still won't because my main function is not async, but if I will change it, I have perfect code and I can run my async code. And as you can see, it's already async because it drops the finished message ahead of my subscribers being received. And right now, it's asynchronously listening to this collection. And if, if it will be a real application, which is maybe subscribed to Q, which is listening or checking my followers' uh, state, I should be notified here. And I can create it for my dashboard, for example, and still listening. And the collection can grow, and my application will still work in the async way. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and the last example is about patterns. <coughs> so who of you already used the pattern matching in the C-sharp 7.x? No one. Oh, one person. It's a great feature, I really like it. It's, once again, only abstraction level on top of the uh, code itself, because it's just hiding some of the complexity of the matching of, the, of specific elements. And C-sharp creators decided to go further with patterns. And that's amazing because it simplifies our work. Uh, tuples were something uh, what created the whole uh, area for possible improvements when it comes to matchings and patterns. And the first pattern which I want to mention is a tuple pattern. So uh, I want to create a couple of person objects which I'm reusing for all of the demos and then write some details uh, for specific persons. And I have a switch statement, which I used in the past, uh, and I can check for the whole object. And right now, I can also have a switch statement checking for the whole tuple. And I can pattern match each variable type, and based on this matching, do something else for different inputs. So if, I, if my person, for example, would be an interface, which can be implemented by different types of types, <laughs> uh, I can check it here. And in case of my middle name, failure, I can also create a case when the middle name is null and do something else with it. In this case, I want to output just the first name and last name in, the, in, the, in my application. But what, what if user don't have middle name and the last name? I just want to output the first name. And that's the first tuple pattern matching improvement. And in this case, it's really, really, really useful because you can escalate it and check for the other types, check for the specific objects, check for the specific um, classes and implementations. And that's very useful, uh, but it complicates uh, readability for someone. Uh, you can also create a more complex syntax for checks of the switch uh, statement. And in this, in this case, you can even return the value from your switch statement to the variable. And to just prove that this, this code works, it may be hard, hard to be uh, read, but when you get used to it, it makes sense. Because in this case, my result is a switch statement over this tuple, first name, middle name, last name, and I'm doing exactly the same what I've done in the previous switch statement block, but using the uh, expression bodied members from the previous version of the language. So right now, switch statement can have expression bodied members, and we just need to get used to having and seeing more braces and brackets, uh, because it's the way how it simplifies in the functional languages, and C -sharp is heading towards grabbing some TypeScript features combined with the F-sharp and more feature and function-wise improvements, and it works. So it's about patterns. This is about the latest features which are already working in the Visual Studio 2019 preview, 
and there are some of them coming in the next releases. And let's just bring some attention over them. Uh, there are some gotchas. There are some issues which I've mentioned during this talk and which I want to flag to you as well if you want to go to your home or work and just play around with those features. Uh, and we are Umbraco developers. Can we play with C Sharp 8 with Umbraco? I already said that no, not yet, but we can do a lot with C Sharp 7.3. And uh, because we need uh, to have a .NET Core runtime for version 3.0, which is, uh, as I said, is in preview. So what you need to do first is to install .NET Core runtime version 3 preview, uh, also .NET SDK for Core in preview. And then uh, you can install Visual Studio 2019 in preview once again. So right now, that's why I'm running three Visual Studios installations simultaneously. But Microsoft improved the way how it, it's controlled, and those environments work totally uh, independently. So you can run three different Visual Studio installations simultaneously, and it, it doesn't hurt uh, for, for any version. And this is what they said about it. You can go to the GitHub discussion and see why they didn't change it. Uh, they are going to work and solve it, but also you can grab the bridging code and, and run, uh, in, include this code in your application, and then you will be able to run those features in the, in the other uh, installation of Visual Studio 2019. Uh, to enable those features, you need to go to the project's properties and select the language version. And if you are having installed the preview, you can select the C Sharp 8 version, which is Obviously, said it's in beta, but it's pretty stable. I tested it on various examples, and it works like it's supposed to. The other way, uh, you can use tools like Sharpen. I don't know if you've heard about it. If you will install it to your Visual Studio, it, it can suggest you which portions of your code can be rewritten to the late, latest version of the C Sharp language. So if you have a long switch statements and you don't know how to refactor it, it's kind of resharper for C -sharp, C Sharp in particular. So you can install it, and it will highlight you the code blocks which are possible to be rewritten, to use pattern matching, to use some uh, expression bodied members, and some link syntax, etc., etc. Really cool stuff, and I really love this uh, package and extension for Visual Studio. This is how it works. So you can analyze your solution, and it outputs you some insights and possible changes. So this is what you are using from specific versions of the C Sharp. And then you can just select, and it can even preview you the output. So it's a really nice tool. Uh, and the results of the, all of those changes is a creation of uh, opinions like that. People are in the middle of choosing what we should use right now as an approach, which state, switch statement is correct. And the answer is all of them are correct. You have eight ways, or even more ways, of writing switch statements. Use your own. Set up the, I don't know, coding pattern within your team, and just follow. But that way, it's nothing bad that you have multiple options to choose. But uh, as I said, I really started to like this syntax with those braces and brackets. Uh, and it's hard for me to write the code which was originally write, written like that. So always, people won't be happy. Not all of the people will be happy, but it's the way how it is. And what's next? Uh, some features were not included in this preview, and I'm really looking forward to play more with them. One of them which I miss the most is default interface mem members, and it enables us to create a extend interfaces which are already implemented somewhere. So if we have a logger which is implemented in the console logger already, and we want to add some method to the, to the interface, we, in the, in the next version of the language, we will be able to do something like that. So we can create a default implementation of the next method in the interface, and it won't break the existing code. Because all of the console loggers then will receive this default implementation of this method. It's awesome. It's really powerful. And uh, you can then do something else. Of course, you can overwrite the, the default implementation in your classes. So if you want to refactor your code and rewrite it or create a different implementation, you can, but default implementation will be here, so your existing code will work as it's supposed to. And yeah, it all works. I've created this demo in the previous preview where it was released. Right now it's grabbed back. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can do that, and that's something what I'm really looking forward to. The other way is that implicitly typed new expressions. 
And this is something new even for me. I didn't hear about uh, this feature in the previous uh, preparation for the talk. Uh, so you've seen this people array creation. And why if I'm telling here that I will have an array of people, of the person, objects, I should specify new person. And Microsoft simplified that in the next version of the language. So you can just say that, yeah, I just want a new object. It already knows that this is a person array. So that's, that's, that's another great implementation. And it uses tuples as an uh, abstraction level uh, to match uh, uh, objects to the uh, strongly typed object, uh, which is defined as a variable here. It's amazing. Uh, there's a lot of great resources about the C-Shop language itself. There's a great book by John Skid. Uh, and uh, there are some channels, presentations done by Matt Tor Torgensen, which helped me uh, with uh, sending some demos and code from uh, Microsoft directly. Uh, GitHub, John Skid's demos. I don't understand all of them, but they are awesome. He's diving really, really deep in the, into the issues of the language. He's helping for Microsoft to make the C Sharp the best possible language on Earth. Uh, and there are some great developed <coughs> articles from Matt Storgensen about building C Sharp A, how the process is going, and how Microsoft uh, listens to the people about the new features. And that's all. I'm Martin Zajkowski. I'm a Bracka MVP and trainer and master from the Cogwords. I'm also running a programming school for children. And I'm Barista on Umbra Coffee, blogger on UDFND. You can follow me and find me on any possible social media because I'm also writing a book right now uh, about social media for busy developers, and you can learn more about it here. Uh, and by saying I'm writing it, I'm really writing it. It's not, it's not an easy way uh, and not an easy job for the busy developer. But when I will finish it, hopefully it will solve a lot of issues for developers one who wants to use social media to build their personal brands and personal courage. So that's all from me. Thank you very much and see you on the after party.